Um, hi, Nikita. Welcome to the Bespoke Careers Employer Branding um, Playbook, and thanks for joining us. Very excited to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as far as I know, you're the only website copywriter that specializes in architecture or only writes for architects. So I kind of wanted to ask you straight off the bat, why architects? Why not, I don't know, dentists or um, airports or any other kind of field? What was it about architects that you were so drawn to? Sure. So I guess, um, you know, kind of going back, I worked for architecture publishing and then I worked in-house um, doing marketing comms for architects. And the biggest thing is I just, in all honesty, find architects quite brilliant in, in what they do. Like, you know, they create things out of, of nothing and they seem to be able to see things in their mind's eye that, you know, us kind of mere <laughs> mortal humans can't. Um, so, yeah, I just thought, you know, how, you know, in all honesty, I don't have what it takes to be an architect. So how can I help architects, um, you know, get the recognition and really help them communicate their values? So I use my kind of power of words um, to help them. That's pretty much as, yeah, I find them brilliant. That's it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think at Bespoke, we're a little bit the same. A lot of our consultants and um, kind of leadership team are ex-architects or designers. And, you know, they left the industry because various reasons but didn't want to leave the industry altogether so came into recruitment because they loved working with architects they love the kind of creativity the vision and so it's a very different way to be involved isn't it when you're not actually doing the designing but there's something about them I mean we've got a client party coming up in a couple of weeks time and we're just really looking forward to being in the same room and yeah. um, sharing stories they're just a great great bunch yeah I can 100% get where you're coming from <laughs> yeah um, so obviously this episode kind of focuses on around employer branding but specifically um, website copywriting which is your speciality um, I, I wanted to ask every guest the same question just at the start because it is a little bit of a um, potentially a bit of a vague uh, subject employer branding I wanted to ask you what you think it is just if you have kind of like a rough definition in your head yeah, I mean, I'll just kind of take it a step back um, because, and really, I guess I want to define copywriting because a lot of um, people, they don't really realise the difference between copywriting and design writing or journalism or even, you know, kind of overall branding. Um, but the thing with copywriting is it is an art and a science. So it's an art because it is about storytelling and big ideas and that, but it's also a science. Copywriting is underpinned by research and psychology and, and marketing. Um, so it's like the biggest thing is it's really about writing to connect and sell. Um, so that is the kind of perspective and lens I look at employer branding from. And I think um, employer branding is it's quite holistic, but it also, as I said, it's an art and science. Um, but really from this lens, it's about um, getting a real, like and if it's a perception, right? That's how I see it. And it's about, from, from me as a copywriter, it's about how can we use our words to create that perception and to get people to take action. Um, and when it comes to a website, that's what you want. You know, you land on a careers page and you want people to be taking action. So how can words help them do that? So, yeah. Yeah, nice one. Um, and often you'll be working on sort of the whole website, I imagine. Um, and the whole website, I would say, is important when it comes to employer branding. I would, I would say almost everything you're doing is important to employ branding. One way I've, I've heard it defined is um, it's how your uh, employees feel on a Sunday night before work the next morning. That's what kind of encapsulates an employer brand. But I suppose what we're kind of discussing today is a lot more about the um, talent acquisition rather than the talent retention um, because the, yeah, the website is a place that you're prospective candidates are going to go they're going to research all about you they're going to find out what it's like to work there um your social media pages all of that so um copywriting yes yeah, it's, it's an incredibly important part of that candidate experience and um the website especially plays a crucial role um so I, yeah maybe i want to go into a bit more detail about say a join the team page because there are a lot out there um especially yeah, within architecture, some people list their jobs on there. Some people kind of just have an overview. Some are very, very basic, but I wondered if you could shed some light on the join the team page, maybe why they're important and what their role is. 
Yeah, and like as you said, the whole website's important. I think that's the thing is a lot of, I mean, the first thing anyone does for anything, whether it's like booking a dentist or going in to a restaurant is people are going to Google you. Um, so obviously the whole website needs to be consistent because if you don't have that kind of consistent messaging, it can cause mistrust. Um, but when it comes to that careers page, um, even just the labelling of that careers page on your website is so important. Um, I've seen it be labelled different things. You know, some people have it as vacancy. That has a very different feel um, to having that page titled on your navigation bar as um, you know, what's in the page you can have that this is on there. So, again, really thinking through how you know, that page can be perceived. Um, a lot of architects I find uh, just have a page that just, yeah, as you said, just list jobs are available or, you know, they might even have a bit of a blurb saying so nothing's available at, at this time. Whereas others I've seen some brilliant pages that really go over and above and it is really about joining the team and what that candidate is going to get out of it. Um, so it's not just the employer saying, like, this is what we have available. Um, it's like saying, well, this is our culture, you know, these are the core values Um of our firm and you know these are the benefits that we offer and the work-life balance initiatives that we have so it's it's really I guess moving beyond just seeing it as a role to really seeing it as a first impression um, and someone is going to have of your firm um, and whether it's a place that they want to work at so it's a two-way street I think um, you know by putting your best foot forward you're going to have people and attract people that are going to be um, you know values align and all that kind of stuff so yeah, like even things like having um, diversity and inclusion policies. I've seen some people do that on their um, join the team page or awards and recognitions. Um, yeah, there's like so many things you can have on that page. It's not just limited to the roles is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's one watch out potentially in there somewhere about um, kind of just trying to cram everything on there and not giving any thought to um, structure or storytelling or narrative. I wonder if you could have a word about that in terms of making your, your web, uh, join the team page tell a story. Yeah, and again, it's about, um, you know, like every story has a bit of an arc. It's kind of like setting the scene and the context and then it's saying, well, um, you know, this is what, you get out of it like these are the, the characters of the story like this is what our, the rest of the team looks like and these are the type of people that you're going to be working alongside um so yeah you're definitely right you don't want to be cramming too much in there um one thing i've seen work really nicely actually is in terms of a bit of a structure is i've seen um even just very kind of rough you know you don't have to spend a lot in terms of marketing budget but um really rough kind of videos of what it feels like to work at that firm so um, and not just inside the office but what these you know whether it's fundraising or things like that so they use almost like a, a short video reel um, and then they support that with their messaging so they might set the scene and be like this is what it feels like to work here um, and these are the benefits that you are going to get and that's a big part of copywriting is always writing directly to the audience or to the reader so in this case um, on this page you know you, you think it's ideal candidates um so you want to be talking to them directly so rather than saying um you know people that work at our firm can get these benefits you say um if you were to work at this firm so it's making that swap between saying people and then versus saying you so that it breaks down that barrier between the reader um and that kind of page as well um but yeah i think really in terms of what's on that page it depends on the firm how big they are how small they are how big the team is so that there, there is no right way um, but you're definitely right you need to have that storytelling kind of lens um, as you write it mm. yeah um, one thing that stuck out there was the use of the you language and that's one mistake I do see time and time again is neglecting that and it's like our our candidates or um, our our employees rather than um, talking directly to the person who's reading it. So that's a really good one. Um, yeah, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about finding your voice, because I think um, architects are really, um, well, they're used to talking to their clients, aren't they? And they kind of, maybe they've figured that out, maybe they're still working that out. But when you're talking to prospective candidates, kind of it's a whole different audience that you're looking there for. So but maybe there's two questions in there. If you could take um, one at a time, maybe the first one is how do you find your audience and then how do you find the voice to speak to those those people? Yeah, I mean, in terms of finding your audience, um, 
it's it's a it's a tricky one but it's almost like a, it's like chicken or the egg like you it's the type of people that you want to be attracting into your world right and you want to be using your words to attract the right people but you also on the flip side want to be using words to filter out those people that not are not a good fit to so for example you might say um we like um having people who um you know respect um collaboration or respect design or whatever working in our team or you just call out the values that you like to have so that you filter out people who are like oh no that's not for me um so you save a lot of time going through if you can do that with the words on your website so that you can again as i said immediately attract and then filter out and repel other people that are not a good fit um but in terms of finding your unique voice i mean it's really about zooming out and strategically saying what is our voice? Um, there's, as a copywriter, there's a whole kind of um, strategy, uh, like strategic process that you go through. Um, personally, um, voice, I'm very passionate about voice. So, for example, I've got nine different voice types and I help a firm map out where they sit um, in that kind of in graph. And I'm not going to go into it, but, yeah, there's, like, lots of different types of voices. But in in a nutshell, really, it's just the character of your firm and a lot of um, firms think about how they look and how they feel but they forget about how they sound and when we think about when we read anything we hear a voice in our head so it's like well how can we craft a voice that sounds memorable um, that sounds different to other firms and that kind of um, you know when you're memorable like that that's when people go well I really really want to work with this firm so um, yeah like for example the voice might be friendly or approachable um, and then you have, you know, different kind of tones that you overlay with that. But yeah, I mean, voice and tone, I could talk about this for an hour, but it's, it's, there's a lot of nuance that comes with that. Um, and that's why it does sometimes help um, recruiting a, a copywriter or someone who um, has experience in voice to come in, help you strategically say, this is the voice that you need to use across social media, across your website, across your job descriptions, um, and make sure that that voice is consistent for building trust yeah that's a really um really interesting point a really good point one thing that um kind of came sprung into my mind while you were talking there was i mean you mentioned earlier about video and the role of video i mean it's getting more and more important these days i think often when people think about copywriting they might just be thinking about words on a page but there is that kind of spoken video element to it too nowadays have you had much kind of work or requests for work in that kind of space or is it very much just sticking to the um copywriting on the page um i've had yeah a little bit i find um not as much as i thought there would be i, I find with architects a lot of it is um still quite overlaid with music and stills and that i you know hiring a copywriter to write a script hasn't come up as much as i as i thought it would um, I think they do a really good job of, um, you know, even some of those video agencies do a good job of like interviewing the directors. So a lot of it isn't kind of like copy written like an ad, for example. Um, but definitely I think they're just the same as images, like anything visual needs to support the words. And I think one without the other loses context. So, you know, when architects tell me, oh, I'll just put a few images on my careers page of just the team behind the scenes, it's like, well, you need to tell people what's going on in that picture you know you need to give it context an image can only do so much um you know maybe i'm biased but i think yeah words direct people's attention they give it image context they can tell a story um, so all those kind of things words help inform yeah i 100 percent agree and then like with architects there's such such visual features that the words sometimes get um left behind a little bit um but kind of leads me a nice segue into what i was going to talk about next or ask you about which is the kind of role of design and um, imagery and how it can support um, the words. Uh, do you have any kind of thoughts about that? Do you usually work with a designer when you're we're doing this? Do you think the design needs to come first and then the words or the other way around? Or what's your thoughts there? Yeah, so interestingly enough, it's very timely, this question. I've um, just expanded my business to now offer website design and branding. Um, whereas before, you know, it was just mainly about the messaging. But the thing is, is, more and more, you know, I've been doing this for over 10 years now and I realise it is a very cohesive thing. Like they need to be working together in such a way. Like sometimes I come in and an architect has already designed their website and they say, can you just write the words? Other times they get me to write the words first. 
and then they go about and design. Um, again, I, I know I'm going to sound biased, but I think the words and the messaging strategy should always come first. And I think that should then inform the design and the branding. Um, because once you've got your voice, for example, you say we're a friendly, approachable, or we're really bold and witty, that can then inform how you look. And I know other Others say that you can do it the other way around, but I've found that you get a bit more of a cohesive kind of result if you go copy then design. So that's personally from doing this for a while, that's the best way I've kind of come at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not so much what you say is how you say it a lot of the time as well, or as a combination of the two, isn't it? So yeah, it's really important to have them both working together, but really interesting point on having the copy there first. Um, I mean, it's what I think it's what leaves the lasting impact on websites is is the messages, the stories, the narrative, um, and obviously the visuals are there to kind of back all that stuff up. Um, fascinating. I've got another question for you. I'm not sure where your specialties lies on this one, and it is a really big topic. But um, search engine optimization, how does that whole beast come into your website copy, and, and what can you tell us about that? Yeah, and look, I'll be really upfront. This is not my wheelhouse. Um, SEO is, it's interesting because I always kind of, when a client comes to me and they're like, that's their main kind of goal and focus, um, I always ask them kind of like, well, take a step back and, and, and why? Like, for example, um, a lot of my clients actually, they don't even care about SEO so much because they're getting all their projects or, you know, even just people applying through their jobs through word of mouth. So really their website then the function is, is to almost just add as a, a trust and a credibility builder um, rather than kind of the place people search. So a lot of, I don't know, I think things are changing. To be honest, SEO is always changing. So I don't even know how much it impacts anymore. Um, personally, um, you know, if a client comes to me and says, it's really important that I just want people searching my name and, and, and coming to my website. Um, I, I mean, I always write with SEO in mind, but I do have specialists then who will do the keyword research and help me build it into the copy. But I will never, ever start with a list of keywords and write from there. Um, always I start with research so for example I research my clients I interview my clients clients um, and have phone interviews with them to say well how was it to work with them you know for an objective opinion we do discovery sessions all that kind of stuff before I put pen to paper or fingers to keep on um, but yeah I would say never start with kind of SEO is is my personal take um, on that yeah 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 um yeah i kind of agree actually i think with this uh, particular example i mean if you're working with us our consultants um are kind of often uh introducing candidates to to clients and and they're coming on um and the, you know we can our consultants can sell the dream you know this client does xyz but the first thing they're going to do and you've already alluded to it earlier is jump on google and find out for themselves so um whether your seo strategy is in or it's out it's not necessarily um, a deal breaker in this current environment because people, yeah, they're going to find you. They're going to look for you. So, yeah, really interesting. Um, I'll just before we end, I wanted to go through a couple of examples, um, Nikita, if that's all right. I've got um, I've got three examples, two from an architecture firm and one outside of the industry because I think it's always interesting to look at what people are doing outside. So maybe we could just um, run through it and we can kind of say what's working. I've tried to choose some quite good examples. So see if you can find anything that you'd improve, but otherwise we can just talk about yeah. how beautiful they, beautiful they are. Um, so the first one is from a firm called Populous and this is their join the team page. Have you seen this one? Yeah, I've actually just got the tab up on my computer too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah. So I'll scroll down. I mean, how about that first call out? Uh, the headline there what do you think yeah I mean that's brilliant it's exactly it's like communicating um what the page is about but it's also just showing their kind of stats you know it's all about the people it's so simple to the point it's it's beautiful copywriting yeah it's a good headline I mean if we're going to talk about design and imagery there's something beautiful yeah. about the people coming and zooming in that way it feels really nice and interactive but then here you can see they've really placed a lot of emphasis on the copy um of the site so yeah look at this one we design the places where people love to be together and we can't do it without you yeah how do you feel about that 
Yeah, so again, look at like straight away you can see they're writing directly, um, you know, do it without you, so it's speaking directly to them. Um, and even just, you know, as you read through the copy, you see that repetition of the word people. So it's just really like it's supporting and that's why you can tell it's so strategic because it's supporting that kind of main headline. So, yeah, it's done really nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is what you might call the unique selling points. So somebody has done a lot of work here to um, figure out what those are and articulate it in a way that's, you know, unique to populace. I mean, it's hard to kind of skim read it, but what, what are your initial thoughts here? Well, yeah, and I would say these, they're obviously unique selling points, but they're also kind of the values, you know, and I think what they've done beautifully is that rather than, like, you know, a lot of marketers like, well, our generic values are health and well-being, you know, we prioritise that, but what they're doing is that they have pinned behaviours and actions to their values. So they're not just saying, oh, we do this, they're saying specifics, and that's a huge thing in copywriting is, you know, being specific is one of the best things you can do um, because it instantly you're not just talking in generics you're saying like for example here they said you know we've more than 1200 colleagues already office we're talking numbers specific numbers so that is just such a credibility and trust booster so all of a sudden you're like okay yeah they know what they're talking about they're not just saying oh we're inclusive and we're diverse they've got the facts and the evidence to back it yeah um for those listening on um streaming devices or podcasting we've got why work with us is the headline then it goes culture health and well-being diversity equity inclusion and belonging and then professional development each have as nikita said um something specific to populace within those values and we're coming down now into sustainability our commitment to innovative design i mean we could scroll all the way down i mean it's a really really beautiful um site i like the way they've got um variety um it's not all just kind of the same format all the way down there's links out to um, oh from there. There's links out to some some blog posts, um, the current open positions, so you can apply directly there um, across their offices, so you can also see their global reach. But yeah, a really really good example, I think. I don't know if you've got anything yeah. else to add. Well, I think one thing I really love, which I would love all architects to do, is to um, if you scroll back up, you can see they've got like testimonials or just like little um, kind of insights who work there and I think that's really important because it just adds um, again an- another whole level and layer of credibility and it's like proof it's it's proof saying like we're not just saying this like specific people and they've got a headshot are saying this about working here so yeah I think that's a cool thing to have awesome so the next one is from Ginsler a massive architecture firm with offices all over the world um, how do we feel about this headline with the video background? It says, design your career with us, and then we strive to hire the best people and give them the tools they need to thrive. Yeah, so again, great kind of, it's very clear. And I think that's the other thing is you want to remember with copywriting, clarity always trumps creativity. So you don't want to try and get too creative with it. You're on, you want people's expectations. They click onto the careers page and that's what they expect. And that's exactly what Gensler have done is, They've got that kind of call to action button that says search for jobs. So immediately if that's what someone wants to do, they can do it quickly and easily. So I thought that was pretty smart. Mm. Um, and they come down here and they're saying, join us on our mission to create a better world through design. Again, it's really focusing on the you. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is really wonderful copy. Yeah, it is. And again, you can tell the voice, right? It's that tone of voice thing we were talking about. It's just the language is so easy. Um and we talk about cadence in copywriting, so like the rhythm of it, and it's just it's got a really good rhythm, I'd say. Yeah, it's cool. And you can see how people approach it differently from firm to firm, and there's a lot of um, commonalities here, but um, each one's sort of showing their individual personalities too. Here we can see on Gensler's, they have um, links to their Instagram page with um, a bit of behind-the-scenes action on what it's like to work there, which I think is a really great way of communicating um, to your prospective candidates yeah and it's a great way like if you can if you see like they've done a great way of um what we we're talking about before really supporting their visuals and their kind of videos with copy so if you were just to have those two instagram things without that headline above it would have no make no sense right but you know actually i think I a typo <laughs> it should be like here Oh, sorry. No, you're right. Oh, here's what it's like. Here's what it's like. Yeah. Here what yeah. it's like. 
<laughs> well, maybe there's an exercise and um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it te technically, but it does no, read no, a little bit confusingly. Right. So maybe a little point point for improvement there. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah, and look at this. I mean, this is pretty awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's exactly so what we're talking about. Specific. Yeah, we're looking at the kind of the statistics um, around um, how many countries they serve, how many languages they speak, um, the number of offices, regions, and then a split on their um, their gender diversity, which is showing more female than male and a, um, a small portion of non-binary slash third gender in there as well, which I think is really great. Um, yeah, one thing, if, if we're going to talk about imagery for a second, one thing I will say is if you're, if you're a um, male-dominated practice and you want to get more women in there, um, show some women on your join the team page. Make it, you know, make it uh, speaking, make it speak to those the people that you want to hire um, and try and sh yeah showcase and if you're doing a really good job like um, Gensler are here then make sure that's being showcased too yeah that's so smart um, and the last one is from Canva a little bit um, outside the industry now a little bit left field but I think it's always great to see like I said um, how other people are doing it and not just kind of get pigeonholed in your view um, when you're looking for inspiration so we start here with design your future with Canva. I mean, you can already sort of see what it's like to work there with the um, various employees. A nice little video here that um, we won't play, but I've seen it before and it really nicely showcases um, the sort of personality of their staff. Um, a great way to introduce a join the team page, don't you think? Yes. No, it's and very on brand. Like before we're talking about branding and that's, yeah, it's very Canva. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Join our mission to empower the world to design. Yeah, and their voice is awesome. Like they've just their tone. Um, it's very conversational. You know, we still have huge goals we want to achieve. Like they're very much like yeah, just talk, like writing how they speak. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, here's a business like architects who you know their whole kind of um, the whole thing they do is design, but you can see the importance they. Pay to uh, pay to copy as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really important. These things are working together, and I just love these these testimonials here. I think they're fantastic. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, having headshot besides testimonial, like beside testimonials, is very powerful. I'm always encouraging. You know, people like to see the person who said it. As humans, you know, we like seeing faces. So, absolutely. Um. And you can see here their um their kind of commitment to is a sustainability here or something. I'm trying to skim it quickly. Um, but you know, all of those things that um they sort of place emphasis on and trying to match your values with the values of the candidates that you're you're wanting to attract as well. Um so yeah. Look, I think we we could leave it there. I mean, those were three awesome examples of some really good insights um came out of that. Let me just figure this out here we go um thank you so much i just wanted to talk a little bit more before we end on you know what it is you do and how people can get in touch with you and um what they can expect after they um they get off that first discovery call with you yeah sure so i guess um two places um i'm very active on linkedin <laughs> i post every day um and the other thing uh the other place is i have a newsletter so if you're interested in i guess getting copywriting tips or templates or examples um that's always a good place um to start but yes i i offer positioning um messaging website design kind of that whole kind of website presence that we we're talking about that is so important to really build that trust so when people do google you um their kind of expectations are matched and, and they prompted to to reach out so yeah definitely if you're interested or just want to chat reach out cool well thanks so much again um and take care thank you thank you so much